I told those of you who were at the rehearsal Friday that my favorite days in the academic year are convocation and commencement. It seems hardly possible that your class was installed into the university by the provost two years ago. And now graduation rituals and festivities are almost over. Similar ceremonies have occurred in each of Yale's 314 years and the School of Music's 122 years. Beginnings and endings. People arrive and people depart. Boxes are unpacked, boxes are packed. But as we swiftly move toward another ending, what I want to think about with you is the timelessness across centuries and the circle of time each of you has while on campus. The enduring and endearing values of an institution are revealed, shaped, and reflected by successive generations of its constituencies. You have and you will affect Yale's values through your life and your work. The worth of this great institution is not found in its buildings, its collections, nor its endowments. The worth, indeed the good of Yale, is seen in its values. In the Apocrypha, we find these words in the volume called The Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 27. And from generation to generation, passing into holy souls, wisdom maketh us friends of God and prophets. So what are these defining and enduring values that characterize our university and the School of Music? A gifted student body, yes. Distinguished faculty, undoubtedly. Devoted alumni, compelling and challenging curricula, State-of-the-art facilities, almost there. Free tuition, that's good. Competition winners, et cetera, et cetera. But I would argue that the worth of this place is its ability to transform lives, to unlock closed minds, to ignite the passion of our hearts, to enable us to see a larger world than the image that stares back at us in the mirror. The process of acquiring insight and understanding that leads to wisdom comes unexpectedly for some, but is in plain sight for others. The road to such enlightenment is at the same time joyful and painful, not unlike the pathways you travel to create a new composition or prepare a recital. It is a lifetime journey. But before I get ahead of myself, let me return to the continuum of generations that you are about to join as a graduate of Yale. And I owe these ideas and thoughts to the late Reverend Peter Gomes, the esteemed minister of Harvard's Memorial Church and the plumber professor of morals for almost four decades. Besides the defining values of the university and the School of Music, there are other values, common values, that Yale's history illumines for our consideration. What are these values that endure that we find in Yale's history. The first is a love of knowledge and a quest for excellence, both of which lead to wisdom. Elihu Yale never saw this campus, but his gifts to help a fledgling college survive were made simply because he believed in its mission. That commitment has been modeled and embraced by generations of Yaleys who found it essential to frame a moral question related to institutional values. Why do we do it? Why should we do it? The hymn we sang this morning was sung at the founding of Yale and at its first commencement, a tradition that spans generations and reflects a moral compass. The song we sing later on de musique is our recognition that music has chosen us and that in giving our lives to music, we have a wonderful sense of continuity with those who came before us, musicians, and all people. Second is the commitment to share, to share what we have had the privilege of learning, to use our gifts in the betterment of humankind, to give dignity to those who know nothing but fear and poverty, to embrace the Talmudic teaching that instructs us to repair the world. Rabbi Torfon goes further and states this, 
It is not incumbent upon you to complete the work, but neither are you at liberty to desist from it. It is not incumbent on you to complete the work, but neither are you at liberty to desist from it. In other words, start something you can't complete. We gave you aspirational examples in our awards this year. Klaus Heyman, Marguerite Brooks, Yaya Ling. We cannot own our talent unless we share it with a wider world. Service to humankind, I believe, is an obligation for those of us who have been privileged. For the third value, I return to a particular phrase from the wisdom of Solomon, passing into holy souls. This is the process of passing on wisdom, of being receptive to enlightenment, and then to be forever changed. Hopefully you are thinking about your time here and when and if such an aha moment occurred. A few suggestions might help. Perhaps it occurred during the Philharmonia reading with Maestro Gergiev, or being in an unforgettable lecture that gave you the germinal idea for a paper. A concert and master class with John Adams, a simple lunch with your major professor, playing a historical instrument for the first time, actually hearing the notes that you wrote on a page or a computer as your peers play them, singing the literature you're analyzing, having treasured manuscripts of composers placed under your eyes in the Beinecke Library. The list is endless. The transmission of wisdom is through others and through the work of others. And finally, the fourth value is the global shadow of Yale. You leave this walled garden where you have been able to tend your artistic and academic plot with the very best equipment, nutrients, and advice. And wherever you go, you will find Yale's shadow and it will offer comfort. But this comfort is about renewing your courage, your determination, and your spirit. The shadow offers no shade for those who gaze backwards with no intent of taking hope to the world through your music. Did you sense this change in your artistry, in your life, in your aspirations? If you did, we have been somewhat successful. There are virtues we seek in our graduates and in ourselves. We assumed you would be an excellent performer or composer or teacher, or you would not have been here. We hope you will become a cultural leader by giving the treasures of your life and making a difference in the communities that are fortunate enough to have you. Now you join generations of others who cared and who care deeply about learning, sharing the knowledge, and leaving the world better than they found it. My generation has not given you a head start on leaving the world better. Today's ending beckons. And I am reminded of Frank Kermode's volume entitled The Sense of an Ending. He notes that the end is not only the conclusion of something, quote, but it bears within it a sense of purpose, even of achievement which suggests that a thing has come to the point for which it was intended, end quote. Such is the case with your degree. In his book entitled, Oh, the Places You'll Go, Dr. Seuss looks forward with keen anticipation and offers wisdom fit for you, me, or better yet, anyone who has passion and love for what they do and respect for who they are. When this was published in 1990, 1991, or 92, um, some of you were probably too young to have it read to you, and perhaps you have heard it since then. And I'm going to quote several selections with the hope that you'll go to the bookstore and buy the book, or go online. Oh, the places you'll go. Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off in a way. 
You have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own. And you know what you know, and you are the guy who'll decide where to go. You'll look up and down streets, look them over with care. About some you will say, I don't choose to go there. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down any not so good street. And you may not find any you'll want to go down. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's opener there in the wide open air. Out there, things can happen and frequently do to people as brainy and footsy as you. And when things start to happen, don't worry, don't stew, just go right along. You'll start happening too. Oh, the places you'll go. And I move toward the end of the book. On and on you will hike, and I know you'll hike far and face up to your problems wherever they are. You'll get mixed up, of course, as you already know. You'll get mixed up with many strange birds as you go. So be sure when you step, step with care and great tact, and remember that life's a great balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft, and never mix up your right foot with your left. And will you succeed? Yes, yes, you will. 98 and 3 fourth percent guaranteed. Kid, you'll move mountains. And there's an illustration of this kid in a pink stole just moving mountains. So, be your name Buxbaum or Bigsby or Bray or Mordecai Ali Van Allen O'Shea. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting. So get on your way. End quote. New beginnings. New beginnings await you. I have full confidence that you can and you will repair the world through your music and your lives. Come home often. Thank you.